how many times have I been emailed or tweeted or everything in between as to what is the real story be about the brown M&Ms? Uh, many years ago, it was part of the Van Halen contract as we toured through the arenas in the 80s that there would be no brown M&Ms found in the backstage area or the promoter would forfeit the entire show at full pay. This was touted wild, wildly and widely as simple rock star misdemeanor excess and being abusive of others simply because we could. And who am I to get in the way of a good rumor? Please come in, sit down, make yourself at home. I did. In fact, the reality is quite different. Van Halen was the first to take 850 par lamp lights, huge lights, uh, around the country. Uh, it was at the time it was the biggest production ever and getting it in and out of older buildings like the Spectrum in Philadelphia where uh, the hockey team played or Maple Leaf Gardens. These places were built in the 50s, the 60s and 70s and they didn't have even the doorways of the loading docks to accommodate a super forward thinking gigant or epic sized Van Halen production. Our setup time and our teardown time was going three times over. We were going into Union Golden time. It was taking six, eight, seven, nine hours longer than it should have, etc. A lot of that was because the crew was unfamiliar with this size of a production. The rest of it was because a lot of the promoters, and it was a little bit more cowboy back in the 80s in the promotional field than it is today. The promoters frequently didn't read the contract writer, and we would have uh, structural physical issues because, hey, there wasn't the proper electricity, load bearing, stress, etc. So in the middle of a huge contract rider, keeping in mind that most rock and roll bands had a contract rider, it was like a pamphlet. We had one that was like the Chinese phone book. It was huge. And in the very middle of it, I had them place a clause that just out of the middle of nowhere, it would say, for example, there will be 12 amper high voltage sockets placed at 15 foot intervals, not to exceed the load bearing, et cetera, et cetera. And then just out of the middle of nowhere, it said there will be no brown M&Ms in the backstage area or the promoter will forfeit the show at full price. What was the point? If I came backstage, having been one of the architects of this lighting and staging design, and I saw brown M&Ms on the catering table, then guaranteed the promoter had not read the contract writer, and we had to do a serious line check, because frequently we had danger issues or accidental issues. It's only recently that they had uh, the stage fall in on a country act outdoors. Somebody else had the video screen fall in on them just recently, a very popular act at an indoors gig. It happens all the time, so take it serious. Well, after seeing brown M&Ms and ceremoniously and very theatrically destroying the dressing room to try to get the message across, lest we have a disaster like recently happened, um, the word got around that, hey, take this seriously. Invariably, I would show up backstage an hour or two early and there would be two old gals in their 70s just like the cafeteria ladies when we were in grade school with the bosoms all the way down to the counter with big plastic gloves and they would be separating the brown M&Ms out of the several five pound bags into their own jar and that jar would then be sealed and whisked away to be given to the appropriate audience for uh, that kind of a thing. The ultimate happened when we play, I believe, uh, it was New Mexico, Santa Fe, something like this. We came in and their new building had just installed a brand new basketball rubberized surface, you know, where they melt down basketballs and then they pour the rubber all over the floor. It's a nice, squishy, bouncy floor. They had a brand new gym for the team and the promoter had not read all of the physical requirements in the contract and our super heavy stage sank about six and a half inches into their brand new rubberized floor. Backstage, not knowing this, I walked in and saw brown M&Ms. So I trashed the dressing room a little bit. Basic cost, probably about $200 worth of food fight and a torn cushion with plenty of feathers for effect. However, 
the sinking of the stage into the rubberized floor, pursuant to the promoter's mismanagement of reading not the contract, did something like $470,000 worth of damage. Cut to the media mulching machine who reported this as David Lee Roth discovered brown M&Ms in his dressing room and trashed the dressing room, causing close to half a million dollars worth of damage. Again, who am I to get in the way of a great rumor? Howdy, Dave Roth. Make yourself at home. You got a brown M&M? Just asking.